Right. Let's talk about the Motorest modifier. And for that, I have my little gingerbread man that I created in the last tutorial. And I'll add the multi resolution modifier. And you can see it's been stacked on top of the mirror, uh, not like the other modifiers that would have been stacked on the bottom. And the reason is that the Multirest modifier does some, let's say, very heavy changes on your mesh. So um, if you go into sculpting and edit your mesh in edit mode later on, then you'll get a problem. Uh, we'll see about that in a minute, but um, that's the reason why you can't have modifiers before the Multirest, because it's just uh, creating such a heavy impact on your mesh, and it probably would malfunction if you would allow that. So let's see what it does. In order to start the multi you have to you have to subdivide it, and you can see one subdivision looks exactly like a subsurf modifier would would look like, and it does essentially the same thing. So maybe you'd ask, well, if a subsurf modifier has more flexibility because I could put it below the mirror, why use a multi modifier? and I think the sole reason is sculpting because with the multi-res modifier you can um, have a preview of 3 and a sculpt level of say 5 and uh, with that you can speed up your render if you set this down or your preview win window if you're not sculpting so um, that's actually a big computing time saver and if I now press apply on the mirror modifier you can see that worked no problems with the mesh and you can see in preview with three sculpt or five so if I change into sculpt mode you should see a slight bit of a difference okay now you think oh I have just created this model with a mirror modifier and actually the sculpting I want to do is supposed to be on both sides so you can just under symmetry you can just check mirror X and if I now sort of, uh, let's say I use the grab one, I can sort of extrude feet, you can see it does that on both sides, so whatever I do to one side it's done on the other side as well, so um, that's uh, the solution for the mirror modifier, but still make very sure that you're content with your geometry before you start sculpting and um, then let's uh, see the other buttons if I delete higher that means if I now delete the highest that would mean it would lose any detail that requires a level file if <laughs> sorry that requires a level 5 multi res modifier it would delete all of that and just uh, sort of smooth out the mesh as well but you'll use the detail of course and um, you can see that I have to go down to sculpt level 4 in order to delete higher because otherwise I would delete something that's been preview and uh, well with that if you go down on this modifier you can see that um, you can see the loss of detail before you say delete the higher and of course subdivide will add it again but of course the data that you had before you deleted the higher will be lost so now let's talk about the reshape button because that's another nice function to uh, to change your geometry of your base mesh once you are started sculpting. Okay, let's say you find out that um, I went ahead of myself. Let me just fix that. Okay, let's say I found out in the middle of sculpting already that those feet just move this that extending those feet in this manner was a bad idea because if you grab something and pull it out you won't have any loop cuts in the middle so you are not able to put many much detail if you use the grab tool extensively so um, let's say I found out that this was a bad idea and I want my feet the feet of this little guy I want them to uh, extrude out before I sculpted this. So um, if I move it that way you can see that I have little to no control about what this is doing. So I'll undo that and now I'll uh, go down here 
and I'll press 50 and in on this little guy, the duplicated one, I'll press apply. So that will apply the multi-res modifier and um, will make it uh, a regular mesh. So um, if I press the divided key on the numpad, I can isolate this object and I can now sort of uh, sculpt my feet in edit mode. So um, yeah, I actually prefer using edit mode. It gives you a lot more control, but I guess I'm just not the artist type as in Photoshop or... Well, I like precise modeling better. Um, now you can see that I have changed the applied mirror modifier mesh and uh, it's a little closer to what I'm going for. And now I can select the original one. No, I select this one and shift select the original one, and press reshape, and then apply base. And if I go to into edit mode now, uh, that was actually not very uh, visible because it's a, such a low resolution mesh. But you can already see it has deformed the feet in order to fit those feet a lot better. So, um, yeah, I hope your fantasy is enough for that, so I'm just going to um, tell you again. You have, to you have to apply the modifier, make a few changes, then select the, the uh, new mesh first, shift select the other one, press reshape, and apply base in order to change the position, the actual position of the vertices, not the position of the vertices after the multi res is applied. So I hope that makes any sense. Optimal display is the same as in um, hide this one as in the subdivision surface modifier. It just in wireframe mode, it uh, deletes or it doesn't show a lot of the subdivision lines. And save external is interesting. Okay, to my knowledge, um, multi-resolution modifier can create very large files because they have to save so many vertices and you can export them and uh, just uh, type in your btx file here and then you can save some of the of the data that Blender needs outside your blend file making your blend file smaller but um, that's not a function I have used so far um, but yeah maybe it is important to some people and I didn't want to leave it out so um, that's it for the multi-res modifier and let's check next next time it's going to be the screw modifier and that's actually one of my favorite so uh, yeah check out my site tomorrow when you'll see the screw modifier bye